Okay, let's start uh, with my talk, Array Programming for Mere Mortals. Um, some of you know me from previous conferences and you know I love Array Programming. Array Programming is a programming paradigm that is largely forgotten by now, which is a shame. The main area programming language you may have heard of is APL, a programming language, uh, not very inventive, this title. Uh, this was developed by Ken Iverson in the late 1950s. And he tried to develop a new mathematical notation because he was not satisfied with what was uh, built over the centuries in mathematics. And it turned out that his mathematical notation was a great vehicle to build a programming language upon, which some of his co-workers did. Um, the problem is APL is rather strange, and every time I try to um, spread some en enthusiasm uh, uh, among my students at university, I hit a wall of fear and scare. It looks horrible and no area programming, go away, go far away, and never bother me again with this. And this is a pity. Therefore, I have tried several approaches to get array programming to the masses. That's my, don't, I don't know, third approach to do this. And it looks a little bit more promising than the approaches before. Um, APL, as I mentioned, was developed by Ken Iverson, just that you have seen the master himself in the early picture while working at IBM. At first, he wanted to call his notation Iverson's Better Math. IBM, but IBM forbid to use this acronym, and the only thing he could come up was a programming language, APL. Um, the picture on the right is the last picture of Ken Iverson. He literally died in front of his computer developing the J interpreter, which is a brilliant way to die for a programmer, as I uh, think, and I hope I will share his fate. Um, just to scare you a little bit, that's what APL looks like. That's a typical APL idiom, and the problem is you can't, you, you don't see anything familiar. Um, there's a famous quotation from Dennis Ritchie. Most of you will have seen it in the early Unix sources. You are not expected to understand this. You are also not expected to understand it. Just have a look at it and be frightened. That's APL, and that's the reason why I can't get my students interested in array programming. So. A couple of years ago, I set out with a friend of mine and developed my own array programming language, Lang5. Lang5.sf.net, hosted on SourceForge, was not that, that success I was hoping for. Um, at least you can read it, but it is not very much clearer than APL, unfortunately. Lang5 combined the stack programming paradigm of fourth with the array programming paradigm of APL, and that was just too much for my students. They were really scared away. Okay, the next approach uh, I undertook is Array APX, a Perl module that tries to bring Perl 5 to be able to perform the basic Array programming instructions. Array APX is based on Array Deep Utils, and that's a real spin off of Lang 5, because when we developed Lang 5, uh, which I presented two or three years ago at the YEPSI, which is based, written purely in Perl um, because I needed Lang5 to run an open VMS and, uh, okay, a little bit difficult <laughs> to port something that is not written in Perl to open VMS. And the um, good idea we had was that we have all array functionality in one single plain Perl module, namely array deep utils. And these functionalities are not as simple as you may think. For example, if you overload a plus operator to operate on arbitrary structures, what do you do if these structures are not of the same shape? What do you do if you add a two times two matrix to a two times two times two cube of data? What do you do? You have to extend the smaller uh, data structure so that it fits the, la the larger data structure. And all of this logic is buried in array deep utils and array APX just makes use of this. Array APX overloads a lot of Perl's built-in operators. So you have stringification, which is also quite horrible. Display an n-dimensional matrix. Ugh. Really, really tricky sometimes. Overloaded R plus, star, minus, slash. And um, some operators, like the slash operator, have gotten a very special meaning. You can use it as a division operator if you divide one matrix or vector through another matrix or vector, or you can use it to implement the reduce operation. 
Okay, I know there's list util which provides reduce two and Perl six has lots of this stuff built in, but that's for Perl five. And this reduce operator slash is obviously the slash because it is a slash in APL. Uh, I wanted to retain some familiarity with APL. And um, many, many other operators are overloaded in a way to work transparently on n-dimensional data structures. Here's a very short and simple example. Let us build two vectors and multiply these vectors. To create a vector, I have a function called Yota because it's the Yota symbol in APL. It creates a vector with unit strides starting with zero and ending uh, and having in this case three elements. And you see the first overloaded operator in action in the my dollar x equals yota three plus one. This plus one operates on the vector returned by yota three. So you don't get a vector zero, one, two, but you get a vector one, two, three, which is stored in x. The same holds true for y. I have yota three, which yields zero, one, two plus three, so I have three, four, five. And all I do is I multiply these two vectors just by writing x times y. That's simple. Using reduce is equally simple. Reduce injects, and I think that's how it is called in Ruby, for example, injects an operator into a data structure. I build a data structure, the usual example of the Gauss sum, for example, I build a data structure vector running from 1 to 100 and inject an addition. I have an error, which is a, just a subroutine reference, which adds two values. And the reduce operator, in this case the slash, injects the adder, the function reference, between two successive elements of $x. And what I get is the scalar sum of all elements in x. That's pretty simple, too. Much more interesting are things like scan. You can do interesting things with scan. Scan is a variant of reduce. Reduce just reduces your vector or whatever data structure to a scalar. Scan works a little bit differently because scan acts on the first two vector elements, then on the first three, first four, first five, first six, first seven. And using this mechanism, you can, for example, build a simple list of square numbers, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, by just remembering how to generate square numbers. You just add 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 5 is 9, plus 7. You just add con successively odd integers. So what I built here, yota 10 is a vector running from 0 to 9, times 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, plus 1. So I have a vector consisting of odd integers only. And, and using an adder like before, I can use the scan operator denoted by an x and inject the scan operator, the, plus, the, the addition operator, the plus, between two elements of x. The first element is just the one. The first plus the second element is four. The first plus second plus third element is nine and so on. And voila, you get a list of square numbers without ever squaring. Array APX also has outer products, generalized outer products, so you can build matrices from vectors or whatever um, using this notation. I need, again, a reference to a subroutine which specifies what generalized outer product do I want. In this case, just a product, but you could uh, produce logical truth tables or whatever. So in this case, M is a reference to a subroutine multiplying its two arguments, and what I do is I build the outer product of a vector running from 1 to 10 with itself. And what do I get when I build the outer product of two vectors running from 1 to 10, a multiplication table as used in school? The result um, is not shown here because all of you know these multiplication tables. Um, let us have a look at the functions which are provided by array APX. Every array APX object must be blessed in some way as an array APX object. Sometimes. It is useful to bless an existing Perl object so that the APX library can work with it. That's what the dress function is for. That's uh, stolen from lang5 dress and strip dress uh, makes an APX uh, object from it and strip uh, gets rid of uh, the dress. Uh, Yota, you have seen already, uh, generates a vector. Row is very interesting. Suppose you have a data structure and you want to know its dimensionality. 
how many elements in which direction of your data cube or whatever do you have. That's one application of the row function. Row returns, if, if uh, applied to a data structure, a vector that describes the structure of this data structure, the depth in every dimension. On the other hand, you can use row to create a data structure. For example, you could build a vector containing nine elements and you could transform the shape of this vector using row in, by saying, okay, I have this vector of nine elements, please transform it to a vector that has the shape three, three. And you get a matrix three times three containing the elements of the vector in a useful ordering. Great returns an index vector that can be used to sort values, collapse, flattens, whatever it gets to a flat data structure to a vector. So if you have a 10 dimensional cube, just collapse it and you have a very long vector on which you can work with other methods. In is a set theoretic in, you have select, index, subscript, scatter, remove, re reverse is simple, rotate, rotate was horrible to implement and transpose because we can transpose on any axis and any combination of axis in, of n-dimensional objects. And um, it's very slow, but it works. Let's have a look at two advanced examples. You remember the unintelligible line of APL from one of the first slides. Let's do the same in Perl. What did this line do? It created a list of prime numbers. And the APL idea of generating primes is rather cool. Not, not very fast, but cool. You generate an outer product of two vectors. Two vectors not starting with one, but starting with two. So you have two vectors, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. And you build an outer product which yields a matrix. This matrix contains no prime numbers at all because every number in this matrix is a product of at least two primes. So you use this matrix to apply a set theoretic in function and look which of the numbers in your original vector is not in this matrix. And these must be your prime elements. And the, this is the method that was shown in the slide before. And that's how you can do it in Perl using array APX. I need multi, uh, s s reference to a subroutine performing the multiplication. And I need, first of all, a vector. I want to generate the list of all prime numbers between 2 and 200. So I need a vector starting with 2, the plus 2, running to 200. So it contains 199 elements that are stored in X. This X is used here to generate an outer product. X times X yields a matrix of these two vectors. The in function here, which is applied, the in method, which is applied to this, ma to this matrix, returns a truth vector, which contains a true for every value that is in the matrix and an under for every value that is not in this vector. This vector is just inverted by a exclamation mark, and used as an argument for the select method, which selects the elements that have a corresponding true in the vector returned by the in function from the vector x. And voila, I get a list of prime numbers at, as I did in APL. Um, you could employ this technique to check for a, simple, for a single number to be prime. Not very fast either, but very elegant as I think. If you want to test a number for being prime, one of the most basic ideas is you could just divide by all numbers up to the square root of this number. And that's how you could do it with um, array APX. And it shows how to employ the row function to transform the structure of a data structure. What I need is a vector with a lot of the same scalar values, $x. I want to check if $x is a prime number, for example, 13. So I need square root of 13 elements packed into a vector and I need a second vector running from 2 to the square root of 13 and you guess what I will do? I will divide this vector by this vector. I will perform modular operation and just look which remainders are left. If there is more than one remainder, it is not prime. Every prime number has only one remainder um, or none remainder in this case because I'm not starting with one. So I just have to count how many divisions left a residue of zero 
to know is it prime or isn't it prime. And that's where I employ the reduce operator again. That's how it looks in array APX. My limit is this square root of my number. I need a reference to a subroutine performing the addition. Okay, what I do first is I have a single X. I need a reference to an array containing only one array element and I have, have this element to be an array APX element, so I address it. This is an array APX object. I apply the row function and the row function ex expects an array APX object again, which is in this case just a scalar packed into an array reference which denotes how many elements would I want to have in the resulting vector. So this creates a vector containing, for example, square root of 13 times the element $x. And then I apply the modulo operator in an element-wise fashion between this vector and this vector running from 2, 3, and, and so on until the square root of my number. Then I have to check, did this modular operation leave the remainder zero? If yes, I get a true. And all I have to do is apply a reduce operator and my adder and sum all the results of this comparison of the modulo resi residues to check is it a prime number or isn't it a prime number. And the cool thing on array APX is not that it is slow, it is slow, but the cool thing is you can get students to think about array programming because they don't have to leave their used environment. Many students of today's uh, high school courses know about Perl and Python and whatever. So they are not scared if you tell them, okay, just use array APX and look what you can do with it. And after you have done something like this, you can try to either continue or extend array APX or show them real APL code and they will suddenly understand, oh, that's not some, just some hieroglyphs with no meaning to anybody, but oh, I can solve problems without explicit loops, without conditionals and whatever in the pure APL style of the 90, yeah, 60s until 1980s and then the APL use declined horribly. So if you are interested, I would love to get feedback on Array APX or support on developing Array APX. What would be necessary would be speeding up Array APX. Many of its basic functions packed in Array deep utils are very, very slow because they are pure Perl. What would be needed, uh, obviously, would be a C implementation of some of these functions, index generators and so on. This would help Array APX to act considerably faster. Thank you very much for your interest. Any questions? To, to what? Uh, yeah, I learned about PDL only after I implemented Array APX, so it's a real coincidence. Yeah, that, that's a great idea. <laughs> no, sorry about that. <laughs> we joked repeatedly about this, but no one came up with a clever idea to implement it, in fact. So we have to wait for Parrot on OpenFOAM VMS to get Perl 6 and, oh, okay, no. <laughs> Okay, if there are no further questions, oh, okay. Because you uh, said that the uh, rotate is, is slow or transpose is slow. Uh, in the 70s, there was a, a thesis uh, published which did uh, uh, access functions, so the data is not moved at all. Okay. So uh, it's very fast to do, do all these structural. Uh, okay, do you have a literal, uh, literature reference? Okay. That would be cool. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if there are no further questions, thank you very much for your interest and have a nice day.